with Hot Topics, Hot Opinions, and the spiciest memes. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm Brody Moore. Producer Tyler is giving us two minutes to discuss four topics, and it will track at the bottom of your screen at any point in time. If one of us gets a line and definitely needs to shut the other one up, we got a trusty mute button here. We can mute the other for 30 seconds. That's right. We like it when you play along in chat, so give us the what for, because we can take it. Let's kick things off here, because after a few weeks of waiting, we finally have a new update to the Echo Fox racism controversy. Riot Games released the results of its investigation into alleged racist and threatening behavior by an Echo Fox shareholder. And it's taking a harder stance on the issue. Riot said that the accused shareholder, who is not named in the investigation, but is alleged to be Amit Rezada, violated LCS conduct. Echo Fox has 60 days to remove him from any position within the team or else it could, quote, adversely affect the future of Echo Fox in the LCS. Brody. Yes. What do you think about this? I don't think you and I have actually had this discussion yet about the Echo Fox drama. Uh, I mean, I don't really know how much there is to talk about it. Uh, don't be racist. I, <laughs> at the yes, end of the day, and, and taking a hard stance on it. Another really early at the end of the day from Brody Hard. <laughs> Two in a Gotta row. get it out of the way so yeah. that you don't bring it up later on. <laughs> but no, really, at the, at the end of the day, don't be a dick. Like, and if you're going to be a dick, it, things are going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's good that Riot's taking a stance on this uh, because it helps, again, divert the attention away from them mm. uh, by focusing it on other people. But uh, no, you had to do something. And if they didn't do something, it would look even worse on them. They had to take action. And they're doing it in a really good third party kind of way. Mm. They're not saying, hey, uh, you know, we're banning him. It's just like, mm. Echo Fox, you better deal with this or this, this could uh, cause you some problems later. Right, exactly, and problems being less money. So yeah. that is going to upset the other shareholders in within Echo Fox, right? Because there's obviously tiers of shareholders in these big companies, right? So this guy, Amit, if that is who it is, uh -huh. has a large majority. He must, or else he would have been booted already. Somebody would have bought him out. Something would have happened. The <laughs> fact that the fact that Rick Fox is saying he has that's to step down, yeah. that's crazy. Like, that seems insane to me because he is the friggin' face of it. Th He's that, gone. That is, th like, if... if, if Rick Fox is backing down. Why has Echo Fox already not taken a stance on this? The, mm -hmm. the real question is, you know, whether Riot should have taken an earlier stance or Definitely. whether they should have taken a stance at all. It should have been the Echo Fox should have been on this earlier. Why, you know, why wasn't this dealt with right away? Why wasn't it like the next day? All right, we looked into it. We saw some emails. Well, this guy's out of here. You're right. It's likely because there was a big amount of money in it. Yeah, coming. exactly. There's always bureaucracy, the right? There's already yeah. there's always going to be something that needs to happen. The fact that Riot said they're completing an investigation means that obviously they had to look into things. You can't just like immediately like Do reaction, they, he's racist, get him out of here. Although we would love for that to happen. Unfortunately, there's so much red tape around so many different things. Do you think they so should all just leave things. that guy and just make their own new org? Well, no, because this is the brand <laughs> they built. This is this is Rick Fox's brand. Like how? Well, not, he's not there it, anymore, so know, just get rid of him. It, it makes me so upset to know that he will no longer be there. Although I think he said recently that he m maybe would come back as long as they get rid of this guy. Yeah. Well, so like we'll the threats are there. Hopefully he does come back because we need his face. Smiling we'll find face. out, but let's update another controversy, this time in Call of Duty. Denial Esports co-owner Zach Smith has stepped down from the team's day-to-day -day operations. This comes a day after Denial was accused of failing to pay former Denial player Natche his salary. In a statement, Smith said that Denial was not legally able to pay Natche due to visa issues. Furthermore, Smith claims that Natche was never entitled to a salary at all. Despite that, Denial will set up an escrow account to cover the alleged player's salaries as an act of good faith. Oh, wow. So this is tough, uh, Marissa, because we know that Denial's actually already been through a situation of being so accused of not of playing their players before. So much of this. And then it's just like one excuse after another, after another, after another. And then at one point, it just becomes too little, too late. Like, yeah, you're going to start an escrow account. You're going to pay these players. Like, man, these guys are already burned so badly. Like, no matter what, their brand is tainted, right? So, which means, and I feel like they're doing this now. They have to do this now because the Call of Duty is franchising. Call of Duty mm -hmm. World League is full-on franchising, and they want to get in on this because they had a spot. But now they're looking look bad like now they look really bad I want to so how can they possibly this. jump in uh, you know there is a huge possibility here that denial isn't lying in this situation maybe they did screw up in that other one mm. but this one maybe they're in the right here and the player that wasn't entitled to a salary in the first place didn't know how to read his contract maybe. is coming forward and saying whoa I need money because you know if you can't it's hard to make money in esports unless you're really good at a game sure. or you're working on your know, broadcast and that besides that there's not a lot of money being salaried to people so yeah. he realizes all of a sudden he's not making money he's like yeah. oh I gotta make money somehow 
this could be what he's doing and he knows that denial already has a tainted image from before yeah. and that they're going to have to bend otherwise it's going to look even worse this could be a case of manipulation from the player as well fair that's actually a really good point to argue because we're we always often take the player's side right because mm -hmm. they're our our immediate reaction we get our immediate attention because mm -hmm. they're always tweeting about this stuff like they are attached to their brands exactly more often and that, the yeah. call of duty community is just very open and honest with things do they think before they tweet no not, <laughs> not really not often not often so yeah that could be something although because of so many claims up until this point yeah. it's just really hard to and and they know it too the players know it too and a lot of them have just openly admitted like look i know i'm never going to see money like i just have to move on <laughs> that's not good it no it sucks really yeah. uh, honestly like jk i guess was, it's better than holding on but yeah no i guess so but like former players of denial that actually got them into the world league are like regretting winning mm -hmm. to get them into the world league to begin with because maybe this wouldn't have happened to other players right it's a trickle down effect i will just say it's good for denial right now that they're setting up an insurance plan in case this happens again, even if they're in the wrong. I think it's, they, it's they too have little to. too late. It's too little to late, man. Okay, moving on to some good news for the Overwatch League. The Stage 2 playoffs were watched for a total of 2.5 million hours by viewers, which is much higher than the same stage playoffs in Season 1. This is because the playoff format changed between seasons. In Season 1, stage playoffs took place over a single day. In Season 2, stage playoffs take place over three days and feature more teams. One downside, however, less people watch the stage to playoffs than the stage one playoffs because of uncompetitive matches between top teams. So, Brody, mm -hmm. how can the OWL improve their playoff format in your eyes? Oh, that's really easy. Oh. Just pick another game. <laughs> Stop doing Overwatch. It's <laughs> problem Why solved. Are Why are you the worst? Why am I the worst? The, what, I, no. I learned from you. Uh, but no. <laughs> set him up. Uh, but for real, uh, I, I, I mean, he's at... I don't think they really care too much because for sponsors, it's about hours watched. Yeah. The biggest thing in esports and when it comes to getting sponsorships mm -hmm. is showing them hours watched. Yeah. How many hours overall? It doesn't matter, you know, how many people are in there concurrently. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, this long of video is being seen by people. You can be a part of the, the, yeah. those chunk of hours. So for them, that's good. Like this is good, even the concurrent numbers are down. Yeah. The issue is that the viewers, we look at concu concurrent numbers, sorry, and we say, Oh, oh, this esports dying. Oh. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter because the viewers aren't paying the money. Mm -hmm. They gotta make the money. So yeah, of course, showing these numbers to investors. Are you kidding me? These are beautiful. Mm -hmm. These are lovely. Let's bring on more investors, more money, more dollar bills, more broadcasts, more stadiums, more teams. Like, why not? This is a big deal to jump from this amount of viewers to the next year, only season two, going that much more. Very exciting. I don't know if they can change the playoff format. I feel like they've had to change it this way to actually retain those viewers mm -hmm. and to show off those numbers. Uh, remember, kids, it's about the long game here and it's about the money. It's not about the fans. It depends. If you're in grassroots esports, sure, it's going to be directed at, at fans. But like, you look at a big production like this, obviously the first and foremost thought yeah. on any of the production teams mind is we got to appease the money. For sure. But right? how glorious is it to Blizzard? How glorious is it to OWL that these teams already had fans from the beginning like before they even played their first game? All of these teams, all these people want to watch Overwatch. We cannot deny that there is something, not to bring it back to denial, um, but we can't, we cannot deny that this is a powerhouse. This is a juggernaut. This is going to be something in this space, whether you like it or not. True. But we're gonna move. I can't talk anymore because time's up. Uh, the Fortnite World Cup qualifiers will continue for a few more weeks, but they've seen to hit a snag. According to viewership statistics, less people are watching Fortnite esports now compared to the start of the qualifiers. Now more people are watching regular streaming content during the week. The problem seems to be that if top players are playing in the qualifiers, less people are watching them. And to me, that doesn't come as a big surprise. Mm. We've seen it. I mean, like if, if you had the chance to watch Ninja or the actual official stream, what are you watching? Oh, well, that, don't ask me that question. Well, okay, I would, <laughs> like For me, I would watch the stream to see what up. But uh, I don't know. N Ninja just isn't my... Uh, like, I'll, I'll watch him. I just don't necessarily... <laughs> I can't necessarily watch him for a long period of time. The, the ish, we, were, we were watching this the other day, too, and I was like... Uh, most comparing the two broadcasts that were happening, Rocket League and, and Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. And like Rocket League was just kicking Fortnite's numbers and butts. And I'm yeah, like, of course. Yeah. But if you actually go to the uh, if you actually go to the the streamers, like the the top players that are playing it, their numbers are way up there. It's right. just an inherent thing when it comes to. Uh, Battle Royales. The only one that's got a really good spectating system is PUBG yes. right now. But if I'm watching Apex or Fortnite, I want to watch the actual pro's viewpoint. Like, I want to go to Shroud and Definitely. see him just shred through people. I don't want to see the top down. You know, I want to see his actual mechanics and movements. Definitely. So it's right. just an inherent thing with Battle Royales that it's not 
as good to watch the production than it is to watch the the team. Right, and also players, kids that are watching, like all, these these guys are just retaining a lot of views from kids watching, mm -hmm. right? And they only know Fortnite, they only talk about Fortnite, they only know certain individual players in Fortnite. They don't really care so much about the esports scene. And and listen, Epic knows that. Fortnite also know like they know, that's right? The thing. That's the thing. They Epic, get it. Epic really doesn't care. Epic no. it, Epic's like people are playing and watching our game. Yeah. We don't give a crap if you're watching our, our production yeah. part. It's cool to have the production to be like, hey, look, we do have a policy product that you can yes. watch if you want to see the overall and overarching action yeah. but we know you're likely just gonna go watch all the streamers anyways which is so, fine because you're still watching our game so yeah. the amount of money they're investing into the production is probably next to nothing to what they're making back by oh those gosh. other people streaming completely they, don't, they yeah. know this they don't care they know remember this is about the long game this is definitely about the long game for them they can test out different broadcasts they can test out different whatever changing meta right before the game starts <laughs> they can do all that stuff because literally five well, minutes before the game I wouldn't be surprised time. <laughs> and they've got money. It's time to check in with the streamers in Clip It. Our first clip comes from Dr. Disrespect and requires a little background information. Dr. Disrespect has previously admitted to cheating on his wife. Um, that was happened a while ago. We all know that. Mm -hmm. YouTuber Pro Jared is currently dealing with his own cheating scandal. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Pro Jared, thank you for the five. Thanks for being a mentor and showing me how it's done, champ. The two time. I should have clutched that though, man. I, d I thought the guy was down, it was gonna be easy kill, but he was actually a full bodied, still full health dude with a shield in front of his gun. Oh no, someone made a pro Jared account and he had no idea. <laughs> And adding the two time to that makes it even worse, too. Yeah. Oh, rip, yeah. Dr. Dis. I'm sure he saw that after and said, oh, whoops. Uh, yeah. It's like the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, Pro Jared, I mean, I don't know if you know any of the backstory here. It's actually a, so much drums uh, with it. I like, I want to feel bad, but or I can't because I don't know. Knew, and he just Unless, made it yeah, even funnier. He possibly, but just played it like he didn't know. Because, like, would he know Pro Jared? I'm not sure about that. Like, Pro Jared, they just come from different worlds. Yes, it's in the game. I'm sure scope, someone would have made a reference to him at some point to be like, stream. oh, look at, like, like, brought it up at some point because of Dr. Disrespect's history. For sure. Uh, I, if so, probably. Props on him for owning up and just like rolling with that. I guess so, yeah. That's, but that's funny. I, like feels because this guy has lost like millions of followers now because mm -hmm. of just the scandal that's erupted over it. Yeah. I'm sure you can find Reddit threads about it. It's just all about pro Jared. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do, although is is any isn't all publicity good publicity? Like he's losing he's losing followers, but like now more people are talking about him. So. I don't know. I don't you, have you any know, publicity, so I don't know. Yeah, but you didn't know who he was before we talked about this. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So now you do. Cool. <laughs> Our next clip comes from all the way down under. Australian streamer X Don claimed he could open a beer with anything. We'll try it. Is it fully extended? Yeah, it is. All right. Yo. You like that, Chris? You like that, baby? I'll try to make it more for trippy boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't think that would happen. Yeah, this was like the few hundred dollar headset. Oh my god. You show us it, put it up to the camera. <laughs> show us it, God. He can't hear us. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. He doesn't have a headset. That's how the best, the best and worst discoveries have all been concluded by. I didn't think that would happen. Right, of course. Yeah, maybe just like don't use expensive equipment <laughs> at all, yeah. and like don't. Yeah, just. I've had. I don't know, just be weary of it. I've had, and I if it's if it's not a, a bottle opener or a counter, people can do it with like a lighter. Yeah, I, don't, I feel I don't like know a, I've broken, that. almost broken a finger trying to do that. So <laughs> I wouldn't even try to do it with a headset. No, just have a bottle opener at the ready if you're going to. Oh be yeah, like, why not? You're in your house. You probably have one by. <laughs> right, exactly. But he's making claims that obviously were not true. So I don't know. T I guess test it before you try it. But it made for a good clip. So thank you. Listen, it truly is the best time of day where we scroll the Twitters to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. It's the best when pros send a message to one specific person. Like back in the old days, they called this little ditty a personal ad. Ninja says, to the kid I didn't take a picture with yesterday, I'm sorry. Jessica Blevins and I were walking in the privacy of our neighborhood and on the phone. Still feel bad, I said no, but just need a safe place. Catch me at Chipotle. I got you. Um, okay, wait, hold up. Okay. The question is, do you use this as a personal ad 
first of all, like as a subtweet only? Or do you feel like he's obligated to actually make a Chipotle tweet? So he made that tweet as a subtweet, but also as a sponsored tweet without having to put ads. Oh, ad. you know what? I didn't even realize yeah. that. That's, that is called stealth marketing. Yeah. I totally, because I actually read this way before you even brought it up on the yeah, show here. Yeah. And I didn't even realize Chipotle, could that could be an ad. At the, same, at the same time, I do want to call him out. The privacy of your neighborhood does not make sense. <laughs> you do not own the neighborhood. If you're out there, you're going to get bugged. I, I, people should respect your space, yes. Yeah. But you can't expect it. But then Jessica replied underneath it. She was just saying, that, okay, first of all, it wasn't a kid. It was a like an older guy in a car driving by and like basically shouted for him to take a photo. And then somebody replies underneath being like, couldn't you just go into the other room and tell him this? <laughs> like, why are you tweeting at him? It was probably him? Seb. Our Jim. <laughs> it was Seb just rolling by. He wanted He's a picture a thumbs up. <laughs> for JJ Pokecatcher. I mean, he probably gets it all the time. He needs to just tweet this stuff too to let people know, like, hey, yeah. I might not want to take a photo with you. Like, hey. just, just be aware. Yo. What? Did you know Hugs has a tier list that he has to share? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> official, official. Top 10 female smashers. Let's take a look at this. Leffin at number one. Frodan at number two. Spud, Zoo, Hugo, Ludwig, and Cactar. Samsora and Tafo, and then Void finishing it off. That's beautiful. They are beautiful. I don't beautiful. know. I feel like Ludwig should have been higher on that list. You think? Yeah. Ludwig just in general is a beautiful man. <laughs> He's a beautiful man. <laughs> Do you love do you love how Hugs also put himself in his own tier list as number five? Like he had to go oh, middle of the pack. He couldn't he couldn't put himself at the bottom or the top, but I'll just give myself well, number five and nobody will question this. Real facts is that only nine smashers tweeted pictures of themselves, so he had to do something. He was just covering it up. Oh, I see. That must no, be it. No, that's probably not sure. He just <laughs> put himself in there. We do have our own tier list as well. If you want to create your own, you can hit us up on our socials with our um, face swaps, basically. You know, me as a man, Brody as a woman. And who looks prettier? Not you me. decide. I'm telling you straight up, don't look at it. I lose instantly. Okay. Our last profound <laughs> thought is from another Melee member in the form of Hungrybox with, you guessed it, a tear. He says, don't share this knowledge. It's too powerful. <laughs> with this easy tier list, water is king. <laughs> and like everything else in F. Brody, do so, you challenge? First off, this, that is such a smasher thing, or yeah. just an FGC thing in general, yeah. um, and also true. I am with him. <laughs> Water, especially as you get older, becomes very important, and you realize its importance. Man, it's <laughs> easy to get dehydrated the older you get. But no, seriously, at smash events, so many times you'll you'll go up to like the pros, yeah. and they have like a full like three gallon jug that they're just carrying around of water that they just have with them all day. Well, it's actually, like it weighs more than I do. That's these good, it's healthy. Out. Yeah, you get your curls in For and sure. you're getting hydrated. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, you drink water, kids. Brody has a specific kind of water that he drinks, though. He won't drink any other water than this. Mountain Dew. No! <laughs> I was Okay, Mountain Dew, yeah, he also has that for breakfast often. <laughs> but no, he will only, like he will not accept water if it came from a bottle. He will oh, only yeah, yeah, drink yeah. Tap, tap water. Tap water only. That's my, that's my. That's your tier. It's like my anti-diva thing, just tap water. He's anti-diva, but he's a diva about it, getting his water from a tap. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on, because it's time to get to some crowd control. This is where I show you some things I found on the webs. You may like them, you may not. I'm not your boss, do what you want, okay? Sometimes when you play against people of your own skill for a while, you forget how good that you may actually be. So I sometimes like to queue against lower rank players and oh. stomp them and remind myself I'm all right at the game. LPN has the same feeling and titles this, when you, a veteran fighting player, entering a local small town. I love it. Just trouncing on kids. You don't care sometimes. Sometimes you need to remind yourself how good you are. Yo, I'm so jealous of that guy. Seriously, to like just trounce on kids like that. <laughs> you, just show them what up. That would be amazing. That's actually, like my dream. Speaking of, exclamation point, uh, M Rob in chat. <laughs> and it is true. That is that is a dream. But have you ever have you ever smurfed on anyone like a game that you're good at? Like, you do you have like multiple clash accounts? That are you, you just joking? wreck kids with? 
no, even the games that I'm really good at, so many people are so much better than me. So, I, no, of course not. And I rarely play competitive if it's not on mobile. You just, you so. just, you just flex in on your, your uh, uh, town mates in, in uh, Animal Crossing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, how could that, <laughs> like, how could that possibly happen? No, it's just there's no way for the games that I'm good at for me to actually create a Smurf account to then trounce <laughs> on kids. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. You'll never know the feeling. I know. Oh, dang it. Okay, listen, have you ever slammed a car door too hard because you didn't realize how light it was? Mm -hmm. uh, Mesos on Reddit had a similar experience in Battlefield. All right, here we go. Yeah, when you're rolling up, you feeling good? <laughs> yeah. Hulk oh. smash! <laughs> the whole building. <laughs> the whole building, Brody. <laughs> the, 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 the best is the look around. When you're, you're just, you get so confused, you're like, yeah. I'm sorry, was this me? <laughs> or is this just bad, like, <laughs> building? Like, the, did the architect screw up here? Was this yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a poor craftsmanship, for sure. I just love that. Honestly, that kind of just reminds me of, obviously, the parable of the three little pigs. Oh, yeah. You know, like, the, the big bad wolf that comes and blows the houses down. Like, yeah, that was the house made of straw. That was the house made of marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> More than anything. There's so much power, though. All these clips that you're showing me just make me feel weak. Oh, same. <laughs> How do you think I feel next to you every day? Aww. Our last post comes from Silver Dark Blade, and he's giving us insight into a horse's workout regime. <laughs> <laughs> what? This Come is, on! I love games that have like uh, ragdoll or um, dynamic animations. Yeah. Now I, that's that's why why you know the horses in Skyrim how they can climb vertical mountains and that. Yes, yes, yes. That's why they've been working out in Witcher. Uh, they've been given the run for. Just making gains, yo. Like, listen, we should all be able to do pull-ups. Like, that should just be like goals. Pull-ups. That just be goal. Like push-ups and pull-ups. That should be goals for us, right? Because we should be able to pull our own weight, just like this little <laughs> horsey. That was a nice little life lesson. But I could also not do that and go home and sit in a chair just, with a controller in my hand. Yeah, yeah, and continue your awesome diet of chips. Literally for breakfast, this guy busts out two bags of chips. And a Lunchable. Different flavors. And, and, a, and a Lunchable. I'm healthy. This, this episode of Unmuted not brought to you by two <laughs> bags of chips and a Lunchable. Listen, that's all for Unmuted. Remember, you can catch us always. Hit us up on our socials at Squad State and make sure to type out exclamation word socials right now so you can find out what they are. We'll see you next time.